What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am Nick here with Ryan and Ty. What's up? Today's video is sponsored by Factor. They are a fresh, never frozen food delivery service designed by dietitians, so you know it's nutritious. If you're someone who is like us, you know we we work a ton of hours. Uh, there are times we go home. Do you feel like cooking? No. No, Ryan. Do you feel like cooking? Definitely not. Yeah. Well, I don't either. And with Factor, there's no meal prep. You don't have to worry about doing dishes. It's going to save you all a lot of time. It's super convenient. You can get up to 18 meals per week, and they change their menu weekly, so you don't have to keep on ordering and eating the same stuff. You know, your, your taste buds are not going to get bored. They have over 27 meals and over 34 add-ons, so you can have it your way. They have keto options, low-calorie, vegan, vegetarian. I mean, this is an old brainer, y'all. You know, my mouth is watering. I'm getting pretty hungry. So I think after we record, I'm going to go sign up myself. I was pretty hungry. We're going to start this video. Of course. I think I'm going to go sign up too. And you can do that by using the link in the description below or go to go.factor75.com. And also, they have a promo code of FactorSE35869 for 50% off your first box. Thank you, Factor. All right. So uh, we have reached the end of our double take marathon. <laughs> yeah. The last band, anyway. This isn't the last song. Got two more songs to go. You already know. We're ending it with Metallica. Because that's the right way to do things. <laughs> Darn straight. <laughs> so I originally intended uh, for Metallica to be the last band because they had a new album recently come out. Uh, so I plan to do a song from the album. And if you guys are in the know, if you pay attention to music nowadays, <laughs> uh, you've probably seen reviews and, you know, just what people think about the new album in general. Uh, and it's not a surprise, like, it just didn't get great ratings, uh, which was kind of disheartening for me as a fan because, like, I love this band with all my heart and soul. So I think we're just going to kind of go with the normal course here. I'm not going to do one of the songs from the new album. Yet. Um, yeah, yet. It's not a terrible album. It's just what the kids would call mid for Metallica standards. <laughs> You know, th there was still like four or five songs that made my playlist. But, uh, you know, eventually we'll do some songs off of that album. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stay the way we were doing before. So every Metallica song we've done is a classic. And that's just how it's going to be until you hear otherwise. Eventually we'll run into a deeper cut, but uh, the library is thick, Ty. Very thick. Uh, I mean, we're not even through chapter one. No. Uh, not even a fraction through chapter this one. It's like an encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> So it's time to flip another page, or should I say, turn the page. Uh, so the song we're doing today is called Hit the Lights. Uh, if you're new here, this is not a first time reaction for me and Ty. No. We, we've heard the catalog. We've heard the catalog. <laughs> Ryan is the first time listener. When it every comes to time. Yep, every single time. Except the last time when we did Lux Eterna, but that was rare. That was very rare. Me and you had never heard oh, that Oh, okay, song for before. us. I'm going to say for Ryan? Yeah. No, every time. <laughs> every time for a, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to Metallica. Yep. Yeah. So Hit the Lights was the first song Metallica wrote. It's also the first song they recorded, the first song they released, and the first song they ever performed live. First, first, first. <laughs> uh, the band wasn't fully formed when they wrote and recorded the song. James Hetfield originally wrote the song with his old band, Leather Charm. Mm -hmm. uh, and later when he formed Metallica with Lars Ulrich, the two worked on the song and arranged it into what eventually became the album version of the song. The band's first lineup featured Hetfield Ulrich, uh, James's childhood friend Ron McGovney, and Dave Mustaine. Ryan, do you remember who Dave Mustaine is? No. <laughs> he is the front man for Megadeth. Oh. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done yeah. some Megadeth. And he was acquired through a newspaper advertisement. Hetfield and Mustaine wanted McGovney to leave because they thought he didn't contribute anything. He just followed. And then Hetfield and Ulrich fired Mustaine because of his drug and alcohol problems, overly aggressive behavior, and clashes with bandmates. But, you know, that could be a blessing in disguise because we would have never got Megadeth. You know, we got Metallica and Megadeth. So <laughs> it worked out. That's when they found Cliff Burton and then Kirk Hammett. The demos had already been done for this album. Uh, Dave Mustaine has co-writing credits for four songs on the album. They wanted Hammett to replicate Mustaine's solos. Hammett's guitar solos on the album were partially based on Mustaine's original solos, uh, with the first four bars of most solos written by Mustaine before his departure. So it's like, I came in and I cooked a really nice pasta, and then I just left. And then you came in and kind of 
finished it off. <laughs> you know, you kind of tweaked it to your liking. Uh, this is from the debut album, Kill Em All, released in 1983. I love the album cover. I love most of their album covers. I was looking at this the other day, and I never really noticed before how the bloodstain pattern kind of looks like a skull, in a way. Yeah. It actually almost kind of looks like the top of uh, Jack Skellington, <laughs> I guess because of the eye shape. It was originally intended to be titled Metal Up Your Ass, hmm. uh, with cover art featuring a hand clutching a dagger emerging from a toilet bowl. Uh, and I think they actually made a shirt of that. Music exec John Zazula convinced the band to change the name because distributors feared that releasing an album with such an offensive title and artwork would diminish its chances of commercial success. Uh, this album went three times platinum. So here we go. The first ever... Se we, we love to do this. First song, first album. It's just what we do on the channel. Here we go, Metallica. Hit the lights. you had your caffeine today because <laughs> this is gonna wake you straight up <laughs> how do you remember this song i don't know just in the car <laughs> it sounds like in the car i remember it in the car i don't know it's just a high speed song burst of flame baby. <laughs> i can see why they probably open with the song all the time yeah it gets you going real quick <laughs> you just gotta love the intro fade in that they did uh, you can just tell. They were like, look, guys, don't expect anything else. We're going to be loud, and we're going to be fast. Uh, and it sounds like punk, Ty. Yeah. Uh, it has the attitude, energy, rebellion that punk has. You know, punk was only around for a few years. So, I mean, they're, they're basically right there, you know, near the start. The difference is, is the transitions and the tightness. Because this wasn't happening in punk. This exceeds the punk standard, musicality-wise. And, I mean, I love that pre-chorus fret, and then into the chorus, that is the moneymaker. I mean, that just sounds live to me. I mean, that, that just hits so nice. Um, it just makes you want to smash some light bulbs, right? <laughs> you know, they have that, that smash room, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's a great song for it. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Just grab crazy. the sledgehammer. <laughs> I've read into those, but I've heard, like, they only let you do it for, like, five minutes, though. Yeah, it's not that long. Well, that's not enough. <laughs> I need more time than that, y'all. What, what would you want to break the most? A TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. Just thrax it. Just one of those old ones, though. Not normal yeah. ones. The old TVs. Yeah. Because the new ones, I mean, it, it just take a... Doot. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. those things break so easy. Pieces. <laughs> you gotta get one of those old big ones that weigh a million pounds. And man, how did y'all move those back in the day? <laughs> There's no way. Giant TVs. <laughs> this is what. Who needs coffee? Just put this on. The best part of waking up is um, with Metallica <laughs> in your cup. That should have been the slogan. <laughs> That's how you kick off a career, <laughs> right there. <laughs> uh, this is just raw in every good sense. And they were like 20 years old around this time. Mm. What the hell? <laughs> Young. Yeah. Young and fresh. <laughs> I mean, when I was 20, I was at home making chicken nugget burritos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all I was doing. <laughs> uh, but it's evident from their first appearance, they could play. And this is without the creative writing. Uh, production or depth, it's without all those things. This doesn't contain any of those. But what it does contain is a song that sounds like the next big thing is coming. It's like we can hear the talent, but what are you going to do with it? It's like when a, a really good college player you know, gets drafted first round. It's like, okay, we, we see you're good in college, but how are you going to take it to the next level? And that's kind of what I get from this song. It's a very important song that opened up the floodgates for more and more thrash metal bands to begin their careers and leave their mark. So in my personal opinion, like I wouldn't necessarily consider this like one of the elite Metallica songs, uh, but it's still awesome. Like I, I'd still like seek this song out. So I think it's great. Uh, first song on the first album, it's very, very nice. Yeah, this is a massive tone setter. You know, if you're wanting to kick off a night and it's going to be an exciting night, I recommend playing this song first. <laughs> so this is a you know just energy filled. I, I'm I'm with you. It's not one of my favorites of all time, but it is nasty. Yeah, I mean the the solo is just dirty. <laughs> it's like dirty rice. Oh fire. my gosh! Oh, that's the best rice. Yeah, exactly. Extra dirty. <laughs> I actually did like the song. I actually uh, the solo is what got me really in the instrumental. You know, I wasn't crazy about the voice, but I do like the uh, yeah. This is James, the character of him though. He yeah, liked, th this is James very early. Yeah, yeah. And his voice, in my opinion, it evolves and and it sounds yeah. a little bit more crisp. And I want to reiterate, like he did not even want to be the singer yeah. of this band. It just 
He had to be. <laughs> he so. could be a lead guitarist for several bands. Yeah. And be just fine in that role. He's arguably the best rhythm guitar player of all time. Oh, yeah. Arguably. It's not a song I would uh, put on a playlist, but I wouldn't mind listening to it again, though. Because Hit the Lights is very is a very easy title yeah. to remember as well. Yeah. So it's like anybody's like, you got some. Anybody good, can uh, just go, Hit the Lights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, and I can see why this is the, like one of their you know, first songs they played ever. Like, I was like, oh, yeah. People were, as soon as they played this, they were like, oh, yeah, we're on to something. You know, people were like, we're going to need more from this band. <laughs> so, yeah, I did like the song, though. It was very good. Yeah. And I would love to see this live. You know, me and you saw them once. Uh, you know, we need to see them again, but they didn't play this song. I'll say, yeah. what songs did they do then? Not this one. Well, there was a new <laughs> album out at that point, oh, so they were yeah. playing a lot of the newer oh, songs. Okay, makes sense. I'm yeah. sure if you went and seen them right now, they would be playing a lot of the new album as well. Right. But they yeah. always play the classics. You know, it's just depending on which one you're going to get, because they have so many. Yeah. Right. But you are right, Todd. This song sets the tone not only for their career, but this album as well. Uh, when we go through this record, you'll hear how no holds barred. <laughs> it really is. Uh, and that seems to be a trend with the debut album, Ryan, because it's like you got nothing to lose. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can name you so many artists where it's like, man, the first album, though, it just it, it hits different, you know, because they're, they're just like, look, what, nobody knows us, so we're just going to go all out there. But, yeah, th- there had to be a great amount of people that heard this record and just knew that the evolution was on the rise. You know, sometimes it just takes one listen to know who has it and who doesn't. In this case, they certainly had it. One more to go in the marathon. We're at the finish line, y'all, so we'll see you on the next one. That's it, guys. Hit that like button, and please tell us your views. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. Peace Peace out. out.